All right. Well, welcome everybody to the Guardian Academy's first spotlight, TJA spotlight. I'm super excited here to get going. Um, we have some folks here who are live. Feel free to use the chat. Type a one in the chat if you are excited. Type a one in the chat if you're excited about this conversation. Make sure you're here. Make sure you're doing well. Letting some folks into the wait from the waiting room still. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and I'll be muting them. So if you see hear some noises coming through, maybe a new participant joining, I'll be muting them throughout the conversation. All right. Cool. All right. So without further ado, just to give some pretense and some con. I'm Randy. Hi, how you doing? I will be just chatting with one of our fellow TGA guardians, Mr. Paul Sparks. All right. So just to give a quick disclaimer, um, that none of the stuff we say during this conversation is financial advice. So please don't misconstrue it as that. It's just for educational purposes only. All right. Uh, with that said, the call should run about 30, 45 minutes. If we have time at the end to take some questions, we will. We'll take them in the chat. And so uh, really excited about this. So let's get started, okay? Uh, so uh, we started these uh, calls. We, we want to start these calls and get them going to just highlight some of the cool people inside of TGA, some of the cool stuff that they're doing, and how they're taking the concepts from the TGA and applying it to the real life to create real world impact, right? What's the use of having it be all in the sky, all online, when it doesn't affect your real life? And here I'm excited to uh, bring on one of our guardians who's taken their principles, applied it to your life, and created some results. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and spotlight them. Uh, everybody, please welcome to the call, Mr. Paul Sparks. What's up, Paul? What's going on? Thanks for having me. Hey, my friend. Hey, glad you're here, man. Glad you're here. Uh, do us a quick favor. Uh, give us a brief introduction and some background on yourself. Sure. Uh, well, I thought I'd start off with a six-word update, if that's all right, because uh, that's probably one of my favorite things that I learned from all this. So six-word update today is real-world impact with real estate. So we're going to be talking about how uh, today, how that happened. But yeah, let me give you a little background about myself. So I'm an engineer by trade and uh, I got to a point where I realized like, I do not want to be an engineer. This sucked. Um, and so I got into a sales role where I was selling uh, engineering equipment, automation equipment, technology, things like machine learning, machine vision, stuff like this to some of the largest companies in the world. Uh, Amazon, Walmart, United Airlines. These were some of my, my major customers. Um, and I spent about eight years doing that. Through that process, I was traveling a lot, uh, two cities a week in, in most cases for a really long time. So just grinding me down. And uh, through this process, I built, started building my original base case. Didn't know anything about any of this at the time, but was using the money I was making from my job and using it to buy real estate. I would buy a house, I would move into it. And then a year or so later, I would move out and turn that into a rental. And so I'd collected, you know, about four or five properties. Uh, I guess it was four properties at the time. And I was getting ready to close one of the biggest deals of my career with uh, United Airlines. And they called me in March of 2020. And they said, Paul, we got to put this project on hold because there's this virus thing and we're not sure how it's going to affect everything. And so, you know, this, quote, stable, secure job that I thought that I had was no longer stable and secure as a salesperson. When your deals fall apart, that's a bad thing. Um, so fortunately, I had been building this real estate portfolio and uh, decided to use that as a platform to really go full time at real estate. And that was about the middle of 20. 2020. Now I run a, a small real estate business here in Denver, Colorado. We do everything from rentals to fix and flips. Uh, I'm under contract right now on an 18 unit townhouse development that we're going to be doing. And, uh, and then I also run uh, this community called the Whale Club, which was really learning how to fuse the worlds of blockchain real estate uh, and, and we started this community and I spent a lot of time doing that too. So yeah, that's me. Man, I love that. I love that. And that's some great, that's some great context and some of your background and some of your history. So thank you for that, Paul. Um, you know, I love how like, you know, like many of us, we had to pivot during that uh, pandemic, if you will, right? <laughs> that crazy time. But but let me ask you this, right? Um, so you gave us kind of a, a brief, uh, like look into your life prior to TGA, but kind of like give us a little bit more, like, like kind of put into the mindset that you were in prior to finding TGA. Also, how did you find out about the TGA? So we can kind of get like, you know, what, what was your journey up to the point that you discovered TGA? Mm -hmm. Well, so when I started, I think what I realized is that building a real estate 
investing portfolio is very different than running a real estate investing business. Um, very different things. Uh, and so when I was building this business in 2021, I had a lot of just lumpy sales, right? We'd have some months that were really great, some, you know, two, three months in a row, it was just like, we wouldn't sell anything. And we just had these really highs and lows. And it was uh, stressful, as you can imagine, on a new business owner, to, just to have that sort of uncertainty. Uh, and so one of the, he was a close friend of mine, his name's uh, Tom, Tom introduced me to the Wolf Den, and started showing me all this stuff about yield farming. And, you know, and I was intrigued because, you know, Nick Peterson at the time was was discussing a lot of a lot around this idea of a business treasury. And boy, did I need something like that. I needed some reliability uh, for the all the uncertainty that I had in my business. And so this was about the summer of 2021. And I think what really got me hooked on all this was just the way that he was talking about risk and these principles and all these tools and frameworks. And, you know, I got into this world by showing up to the very first DGEN event and being like, I gotta, I gotta meet these people. Like I gotta see these people in, in person and, you know, uh, get a feel for what's going on here. And so I had, I had built my own business treasury by let's say January of 2022 and it was kicking off enough cash flow to really offset the majority of my expenses in my real estate business. Um, and, you know, I dove, I dove head, head first into the CCA and, you know, that type of stuff, which, as you know, is, is pretty much the essence of what the, the Guardian Academy is, right? It's all built off these same principles of financial certainty and how to achieve these things. And so that's how I got into it. It was a close friend of mine, fortunately, sort of pulled me into this world, showed me how to do these things. And because of those principles, was able to build this business treasury and really like loosen the noose, as I like to say, right? Like we're always operating, you know, in real estate. Well, I should say new business owners, right, are operating from this, um, you know, scarcity mode. Like we're trying to get our businesses to be reliable, but that's, you know, easier said than done. And, and I use the concepts that I learned about business treasury to help me build my business that I have today. That's wonderful. I appreciate that. That's, that's actually pretty cool. And um, props to your friend, Tom, for <laughs> taking the risk and sharing stuff with you, right? Like how your life is uh, taking a different trajectory. So that's great. That's great. Um, we'll appreciate that. So we're here in the portion of your life where you're now um, involved with TGA, learning the principles. You've dove into the CCA principles as well. Those of you who aren't familiar with CCA, it's, um, it's, you know, it's amazing higher level training around business, around financial certainty. And so you can find out more about that later. I'm sure we'll have some information around that. Um, so let me ask you this, right? So um, now you found the TGA, you've gone through it, you've done some of the, you gotten some of the principles, you've applied it to your business. Um, how, like, like, how has life been since finding out that information and applying it to your everyday life? Kind of paint us a picture there. Well, I think the first principle that really shifted the way I thought about business was the solvable problem. It's one of the first things that we learn about in the Guardian Academy. And uh, that concept of getting closer to the things that you want without chasing more was uh, really like the pivotal point. I started realizing like all the areas in my life and my business that I was just doing things because I don't really know. I just don't really have a good answer for it. I was just doing stuff to try to make money, right? And um, building these businesses, as, as a lot of entrepreneurs, myself, I can speak for myself in particular, I struggle with the comparison trap, right? This person has a bigger business than me. They're doing more deals per, deal than, or per year than me. They have more guard tokens than me, right? And so it's this constant trap of competition, and that was something that when I learned the solvable problem, really how to know um, what it is that you're trying to actually accomplish in your life, right? Why do you, why are you investing in DeFi and learning all these things? Why are you investing in real estate? And so before that, I think I was just doing things to do them, you know, to make money and, or to compete or, I mean, that was what it was for me in particular was just like this comparison trap. Um, and, and once I really got clear, clear on what I was trying to accomplish, 
I started realizing that I was, I was making enough money to really have the things that I wanted in life. It was just, how about we just turn the negative months to zero? How about we just recapture the resources that you're, you're spending on watching charts all day and sitting around trying to, you know, chase after more and more deals in real estate when realistically um, I had everything that I needed. I just needed to redesign my business, which was a very difficult pill to swallow when you realize that you've, what you've done for the last two years is just scaled a bunch of chaos, created a big mess for yourself. And really, you know, another way of saying that is just, I started, I was loading weight in the middle of the bar and I created a job for myself. Um, so I've spent the last year and, and, and a half pretty much like unwinding a lot of the mistakes that I had made. And uh, now I've gotten to a point, and I'm sure we'll talk about this more, where you know I have a, a, a significantly higher level of certainty. My anxiety around uh, my investments, my businesses has dropped significantly. And now I'm focusing more on the community of the whale club that we're building in order to help other real estate investors come to the same conclusions and design their life in a way that they can get closer to the things that they want without playing this comparison game of constantly chasing more and more. That's wonderful. I love that. Oh man, that, that's so good. Cause um, I, I feel you, I've been in that trap too, right? I'm not being clear with a solvable problem or what it is I'm looking to achieve. So therefore I'm constantly chasing and chasing rather than you know identifying, am I getting closer to what it is I want? So love that, Paul. And you spoke about a few principles here. I want, I'll have you touch on in a moment. Um, but yeah, so hey, in the chat, folks, you know, we have some people on the call. Thanks for being here live and listening. Drop some of like, you know, some, some questions or maybe some comments if you're relating to anything Paul is saying, right? Um, this is a participatory event. Feel free to participate. Uh, if we have time for questions at the end, uh, we may have that. So feel free to ask some questions now, and then we can get to it if there's time later on the call. All right. So um, love that, Paul. So I can see where we're at now, how you applied it to your life. So let me let me do this. Right. Uh, and people people love these type of things. Um, let me ask you this. Can you give us what are one or two high impact principles you've applied right uh, in your life and how? So therefore, we can kind of see what's the practical application of what you're talking about, because recapture, reallocate. People are like, oh, yeah, what's that mean? You know, oh, yeah, yeah. stop looking at charts. But what does that mean for their life? So we wouldn't mind touching upon that. I know in our prior call together, just to get to know each other, you talked about some other principles too. So feel free, man, dive into that. I would love to learn from you and hear from you. All of these things weave together like a lattice, right? So first of all, it's hard to just pluck out one principle without really you know, considering all of the other things and how they sort of weave together here. So uh, I talked about the solvable problem. And the the main um, impact that had on my life was this idea that, you know, I give this analogy as like a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners treat their, their business like this. Imagine you were getting into your car and you were going to go somewhere using Google Maps. You've never been to this place before that you're going. And you type into Google Maps, I just, I want to go north. And Google Maps is like, well, what, what does that mean? You know, I'm here in Denver. North could mean Seattle. North could mean the Arctic Circle. North could mean Minneapolis. I mean, it, it's, all, it's very, you're not really defining an endpoint when you say north. You're just chasing more and more and more. And so because of that, you have no idea how long is it going to take you to get there. Do you, do you need to speed or can you like pull over and take a look at the sites while you're on your way? Um, right. Are you risking... Uh, are you risking things, right? And so figuring out how to design my life and my businesses to get out of this chasing more or just going north as far possible as we can go, and then just defining that endpoint. When I when I did that, you know, we started realizing that, you know, you, you mentioned recapture and reallocate. That's really the name of the game there is we're already generating a significant amount of revenue. We're generating, you know, yield from the base case. We're generating all sorts of, uh, you know, revenue, let's just say. But you've got another way of saying it is like you've got these holes in your bucket. You're spending resources on things that don't actually get you closer to what you want. Um so first of all, getting clear on this is the life that I am trying to design for myself. This is the amount of money that I will take to fund my core priorities and all my preferences. 
this is uh, the type of, you know, I, I we talk about this acronym timer, time, in, uh, influence, money, energy, and reputation. We actually, in the whale club, we added an A on the beginning for attention. And it's just this idea that if you don't really know what currencies you have and what currencies you want more of, you'll start making decisions based if you're like me, most of the time, just like I can make more money if I did this, right? Without realizing the other resources and currencies that you're trading. So that simple framework of get closer to the things that you want in life without chasing more was, was, was an, in, uh, an immense impact on my life because I, again, I was just doing things to try to keep up, to try to, you know, uh, because I was trying to compare myself to other people. Love that, man. I love that. And I love the concepts you're talking about um, when it comes to um, uh, those things, and especially. You know, so I don't, I don't know if you to talked about it quite in depth, but like you mentioned earlier that you're putting things in the middle, right? In the middle and creating a job. Could you talk about more of that a little bit, that concept of the barbell and yep. how you're using it today to pull yourself out of that and to, you know, I guess, go into different sides of the barbell? Yeah. Well, what I love so much about what the TGA has done is like, this is not a new concept. You know, I don't know if you can see my my uh, Stoics back here uh, live on camera, but you know I've got all these all these Stoics over here, and they talked about this two thousand years ago. A guy named Seneca, and you know Nick talks a lot about uh, he 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 references Nassim Nicholas Taleb, and there's a book that he wrote called Anti Fragile, and in that book they talk about this what they call a bimodal strategy for risk domestication. And that's a whole mouthful of words. And, and what, what you know, Nick and, and Dan did is they were like, let's just call this a barbell, right? The idea being on one side, we want to have the reliable things in our life, stuff that we're using to lock in our financial certainty. Uh, and then on the other side, we want to take bets that are asymmetric to the upside. And this is defined in Dan's book, Rigging the Game. and the idea being you should either be on one side or the other. We want to get stuff out of the middle. You know, the bets on the reliable side are, are fairly low risk, fairly low return, but they're going to get us where we need to go consistently. We can rely on it. The asymmetrical upside bets have almost no reliability, but we make bets that are small that could potentially have a really large upside to sort of shift over to the other side of the barbell and use that to lock in getting closer to our solvable problem. Well, what I found was I was taking a lot of bets that some of them, like if they went well, that's great. We'll make a bunch of money, but also if they went bad, it could set me back pretty far. Now, again, I mentioned earlier that I was an engineer and I'm actually a terrible engineer. I'm a pretty terrible operator of businesses. And like, I think I, I had to get over that for a while. I was uh, sort of afraid to play my game. I'm a salesperson. That's what I've done my entire career. For some people, that word is almost like a bad word. It's like nails on a chalkboard. They hear salesperson. They're like, ooh, I don't, I don't want anything with that. Well, that's what I am. And that's what I was put on this earth to do. And so what I found was that I was getting myself into situations where I was having to operate. So things like, for example, fix and flips. We did a bunch of fix and flips. What, what you may not know about doing fix and flips is you need to be a very good operator to do that. You have to keep all, everyone, you know, all the schedules correct. You got to coordinate with the subs and the materials. And just there's just so many moving parts. Talk about system reliability, right? And there's just all these moving parts. Well, what I realized is I was doing a lot of things in business just because other people were doing them, right? I was not really playing my game. I was playing their game. And so when I started getting things like running big teams, doing fix and flips, running businesses and participating in partnerships where it required me to be very detail oriented and process oriented, I had to get that stuff out. Right. I had to I had to focus more on reliable things like my rentals, like certain real estate strategies that don't require me to actually do a project. So we do things uh, again. I don't know how familiar your listeners are with the specifics of real estate, but we have a bunch of different strategies where we don't actually take title to the property. We sell it. 
uh, before I actually have to take title. So I make less money, but the risk is significantly lower. And then what I do now is I focus on things is in addition to that, that have massive upside with very low downside. So I mentioned that I'm doing an 18 unit townhouse project. Well, you might think that that would have more risk associated with it, but the, the reason why that has very low risk is because of the people that I've partnered with. So I am not operating the business, right? I work with these guys who have a track record of success, who have been doing this for decades, who have built hundreds and hundreds of these things. And my role is to raise the capital and to bring the deals in some cases, right? And let them do what they need to do. I have tremendous upside because again, it doesn't take a lot of my time. And the upside is tremendous, but the downside is very low because these guys know what they're doing. And it's the same way I approach my uh, uh, investing in alternative currencies like DeFi and, you know, the Guardian Academy and all the stuff that I do there. I approach it um, using this barbell structure, try to get things out of the middle and align it with either reliability or asymmetry to the upside. Dude, well, man. That's awesome. That was, you like that? That? <laughs> that was good, bro. That was good, dude. I learned That's everything good. I know from you guys. So, yeah. Oh, I mean, hey, you're paying attention, apparently, man. It's really good. I love that. Um, so, <clears throat> you said a lot of amazing things there. And, um, you know, part of that, too, was like how you were really discovering who you were, right? Knowing how to play your game, as we call it in TGA and CCA. Um, and I, I thought it was pretty cool. That discovery of like, hey, what you're good at, what you like and what you are not good at and you don't like. So that's pretty cool there. That's pretty cool there, Paul. Um, so do this, right? I, I would love to hear uh, all the cool things you're doing. It sounds like you're creating a lot of um, impact. Uh, and so rather than me assume what that is, could you just kind of share with us, what is a real world impact you're creating as a result of applying these principles? Are you, you know, communities maybe, yourself, your family, what type of real, uh, real world impact is being created? Well, first of all, my, my dad's hiding here in the background on this call. And, uh, you know, so my whole family is, is our guardians and got into this community and have learned a, a tremendous amount. And um, so I'm just fortunate to not only have friends that have brought me into this that, that I'm surrounded with, but also my, my family, uh, which is really cool. So, hey, dad, I know you're listening and you can see me, but uh, I can't see you. So, um, so real world impact. When I learned this stuff and I went through the CCA, right, which is sort of like the Guardian Academy on steroids, right? It's like being taught by some of the, uh, you know, Dan Nicholson, Nick Peterson, Randy Massengale. And, and I went through this six week course where I learned how to do all these incredible things and learn really just the essence of what it means to play my game and unapologetically, right? I'm going to lean in to, uh, as they say, my unique disposition. Um, and through that process, I started realizing I'm not really the only one in the real estate community that struggles with this. A lot of us struggle with comparison. A lot of us struggle with just chasing more and more and more. Um, so we started this community called the Whale Club. And really it started by... Um, at the time, I didn't really know exactly what I was doing in terms of where this was going to go. It just started off by like, hey, I learned how to create a whole bunch of reliable cash flow using stable coins and base case and all sorts of stuff like that. And I wanted to show real estate investors how I was doing this. That turned into uh, building a partnership with another gentleman named Steve Trang. Steve is a pretty large uh influencer, I suppose, in the real estate space. He, he runs a, a sales training program where he teaches a lot of entrepreneurs, real estate investors, how to, how to get better at sales. Um, and because he and I had a lot in common, we're both engineers, we're both sales guys, we partnered up to start uh, trying to bring these, this message to the real estate community. And through that process, we ended up partnering with Nick and Dan to use the specific language around certainty, you know, what Dan had put into this book, uh, 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 rigging the game and what's, what's the premise for the guardian Academy and all these different things. Right. And so we have taken that and brought it to the real estate community in order to help real estate investors get certainty in their life without chasing more and more and more. So, 
Um, I, I am just forever indebted and grateful to the, the people who have taught me these things. And I'm making it sort of my mission now to go and bring this message to the other you know, folks in my real estate world and, and beyond, teaching them how to build these things out. Right? How to use these tools of real estate and blockchain and all this type of stuff to get closer to their solvable problem. So that's what we're working on now. We've got about, uh, I think it's uh, 67 roughly real estate investors in our community. And then we've got another couple hundred. Uh, a lot of them are Wolf Den people, uh, tar you know, Guardian Academy people. And a lot of them are just trying to learn how we're fusing these worlds of blockchain and real estate. So yeah, that's what I'm working on these days. Wow, man, that is, that is amazing impact. Uh, I, I can only imagine what the ripple effect is going to be generations from now, from what the work you're doing with you and Steve and uh, how these people's lives will be impacted in the future and, and their future generations. So I think that's, that's pretty special. So that's awesome, Paul. Um, all right, so I have some questions for you here uh, related to the Well Club because I don't want to get too far off topic and I forget to ask. Um, two questions for you, Paul. One, right? Um, someone's asking, how does the Well Club and blockchain fuse? And I think it's pretty appropriate to the conversation now. And yeah. two, uh, how do you get access to the Well Club, right? Because let's say someone shares this recording with a friend or family inside of, um, you know, just just hey, they know real estate, they love real estate, um, they want to know more about crypto and, and, and real estate together, and they share this, this recording and video with them. Can you kind of share how they would actually be able to participate or maybe even get access to the Well Club? Yeah, absolutely. Let's start with your first question. Um, <clears throat> there are, what I have learned is that there is a massive upside in the blockchain space. You know, this emerging tech has created a lot of, generational wealth for a lot of investors in that space. And I know this specifically because a lot of the people who pulled me into this created a lifetime's worth of wealth in seemingly, you know, a year's worth of time. And so it really started by, well, let's talk about their barbell, right? If you're an active, let's say you, you're a W-2 employee or you're a, an entrepreneur or just an industry professional of some kind, maybe not in real estate at all, Let's say you got a day job and then you found all this wealth in, you know, the Guardian Academy and the things that they teach you guys, you know, how to do. And I, I experienced the same amount of, uh, of upside, right? We, we saw what happened and, and what's possible. Well, what I started looking at is saying, how do we help that community get access to some of the most reliable assets on planet Earth? Obviously, I'm biased, as Nick would say, let me state my biases. I am a real estate investor, right? So I have a strong macro belief in real estate. But what I also know is that not everybody wants to be a landlord. No, not a lot of people are crazy enough to deal with tenants and toilets and foundations and all this stuff, right? They don't want to look at deals. They don't want to send out direct mail and negotiate with sellers. They don't want to do any of that. They just want to have a mechanism to downshift from the wealth that they're building in the blockchain space into something secure and reliable. So it started by saying, well, how do we help the trillion dollars that's in the crypto space downshift into other reliable assets, specifically in this case, real estate? And right now, there really is no path. There is no, it's not even a dirt path. It's like, it's just a forest. You know, you have to, you want to get your money out of crypto and into real estate. You've got to sell your, you know, tokens, move it into your MetaMask, send it back to Binance, move that into your bank account, and then wire it to my bank account. And then I'll put it into real estate. That'll turn into cash flow, which will go all the way back around. And most, most people in the crypto world were like, no, that's too many steps. I don't, least amount of moves, you know, least amount of risk, least amount of effort kind of thing. Right. And so we started saying like, well, that makes a lot of sense. What if we could just give you guys a button to press, right? Press this button and buy real estate. Cause we all know that uh, myself included crypto people love to press buttons. So like, let's figure out how to get them a button so that they can buy real estate and imagine that, you know, you, you make money on one side of the barbell and then you have this menu to choose from. You don't have to deal with tenants and toilets and all this type of stuff. Us real estate investors, we do that. 
right? And a lot of us, we go out and we raise money to buy these deals, right? So like I said, I'm buying an 18 unit townhouse development here in Denver. We raised just shy of $3 million to do that deal. And, you know, our investors just sit back and collect cash flow. It's just, uh, you know, they're not taking on a ton of risk. Obviously, there's risk in real estate, but relative to some of the other options that are out there, it's fairly low risk. And they just get mailbox money. And that was the concept was um, how do we help the crypto people buy tokens in real estate projects? So you want to buy into a short-term rental fund, let's say in, in Florida, Miami Beach. And then you also want to buy into a single family rental fund in the Midwest because everybody needs a place to live. Then you want to you want to go a little higher risk and buy into a development project or a multifamily unit in the Northeast. And the point is, is like, wow, what if we had this menu of options for investors in the crypto space to downshift into real estate? Now, that is one of the many applications that we see. My opinion is that's the lowest hanging fruit. We want to position not only helping real estate investors get access to capital that's that has no way really to get into real estate other than this big circuitous route that I sort of mentioned earlier. And so we're helping them access a capital market that's completely untouched. We're also helping crypto investors get access and 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 provide a community where they can meet these real estate operators who are also very interested in how to use blockchain. So it's this amazing community where we're bringing both of these worlds together with the intent to help each other on, on either sides of the barbell. We got the real estate people, we got the crypto people. How do we build this path between the two? And that's, you know, that's what we're working on right now. That's wonderful, man. I, I, so for those of you who, here, let me just dive in here. Uh, for those of you who are like, who oh, that was pretty cool, that's awesome, right? And so um, obviously I got to give a disclaimer. This is not a recommendation or anything like that. However, we love Paul, right? So I'll say that too. Um, feel free to do your research, take a look at it. If it makes sense, hey, do what you do. It's a, you know, do what you do and figure out uh, what makes sense for you, right? Um, I will personally say that sounds very exciting. <laughs> so that's good stuff, Paul. Um, and yeah, so second question, um, if someone, you know, just wanted to figure out how to get access to Well Club, maybe it's the first time you're hearing about it, family or friends sent in this video, um, how would they, you know, figure that out? So you can go to realestatecertainty.com. There's probably some other routes. I know that there's a, we have a special section in our Discord for Wolf Pup holders, and we have a very special discount for anybody that is a Wolf Pup holder that wants to join as a whale into our community. But just like the Guardian Academy, we do a ton of free stuff, right? We're trying to educate and, and I would say and provide a community for three major areas. First is the financial certainty piece. This is the base that we build off of in the same way that the Guardian Academy builds off of a curriculum and these principles and these foundations. We do the exact same thing. You are probably going to be very familiar with the language that we use because it's almost the same as what they're using in, in the Guardian Academy, just with some slight differentiators specifically for our market and our industry. The second thing is real estate education. So we provide a lot of free information, how to invest in these types of things passively. If you were so inclined to do this actively, we have some of the top real estate investors in the country in all aspects of real estate investing. So we're doing all sorts of uh, what we call keynote calls. So every second Thursday, we have a, one of our whales come in and present on a specific topic. I believe the next uh, next week we're doing multifamily, I think, is what we're doing next week. Uh, but we've got one coming up on Airbnb investing. I think there's going to be a gentleman who's a, who's a whale. He's He actually lives in Puerto Rico and is buying a what is it, an, uh, an old apartment building and turning that into a 24-unit boutique hotel in San Juan, Puerto Rico. So we have just some incredible investors all across the country that are eager to share their knowledge and expertise because they want to learn from the crypto people, right? They want to learn from all of, all of uh, the people that are probably listening to this call. And, and so we have a lot in, in the real estate side, and then obviously we do a lot in the blockchain side. So we're teaching... Uh, it's a lot of basics. Like it's a lot of, you know, teaching real estate investors 
how to get money into Binance and then how to move it to MetaMask and then how to go in and buy the base case and how to do yield farming and don't watch charts all day and, you know, stuff like this, right? So it's a lot of similar things. We do that, but at the same time, we gear also towards how do we make use of blockchain technology as real estate investors? So for example, we focus, uh, we look a lot at this application that I was describing just a second ago is called uh, tokenization. So real estate tokenization, buying coins in a real estate company the same way you would buy stocks in a company, right? That's what we're trying to create. But we're also looking at how do we, uh, what's the impact of title and ownership transfer on the blockchain? We're looking at um, the idea of creating like the Carfax for properties. So imagine that when you buy a house in the same way you buy a car with a Carfax, you're getting the, the maintenance history, you're getting the purchase and sale history, all this type of stuff. Well, we could do the same thing with a house, right? And all of this could be done on blockchain. So it's just a bunch of early movers to the space, future leaders in the space, trying to understand how do we bring real world value to the blockchain and to the real estate space. Damn, bro. That's that is very exciting. And um yeah, that is some pioneering stuff, man, some trailblazing stuff. So um uh, I love it. I love it. And then here's the thing, we're we're coming up to the, the close of our, our time here. And so um I want to respect your time, Paul. Um though I do want to say uh that I'm just excited about what you guys are putting together, right? Um let me ask you this. How how long have you been involved with TGA? When you how long did you find out about it? Or in crypto in general? So this was uh, 2000, I would say like July, 2021. So um, that was my first entry into that. I've been uh, just immersed since that time. And, uh, you know, part of what I think creates a good guardian is someone who takes this knowledge and then goes out and tries to build your own thing, play your own game, apply this to your own life and make a real world impact. You know, I've tried my best to do that. We're, we're st it's a work in progress, um, but we, we are looking for people that are trying to learn how to apply the same things, but to the real estate space. So again, if that's you, if you want, if you like the Guardian Academy, right? And you wanna learn more about how we're using that same stuff inside of, uh, you know, the real estate world, you can go to realestatecertainty.com. There's a link. There's also there's rabbit holes all over the place, right? And so you can find our podcasts. You can get access to our free community there. And uh, we've got a wait list. So if you're interested in, in um, networking and joining our community as a whale, we have a special discount specifically for Wolf Pup holders. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to be a real estate investor to join. In fact, we have quite a few people who are just looking to get around some of the top real estate investors in the country. They know they're going to be sitting on massive gains over the next few years here in the crypto space, and they want to start planning their downshift, right? They want to start learning about the options to, to take that upside play and shift it to the reliable side of the barbell. Of course, we see real estate as a fantastic, reliable play. So if you want to learn more about that, just go to realestatecertainty.com. Awesome, man. I love that, Paul. So um, we're about to run out of time here. You had like a 30 second, any other or summary or wrap up you'd like to give us or you know, anything you'd like to say before I close the call? Um, I just can't thank you enough for having me on here and giving me a chance to share because you know I, I do feel, like I said, this massive indebtedness to this community. I've learned so much from the Guardian Academy and from you know Nick and Dan and all these CCA principles. I don't. I it's it's fair to say I wouldn't be where I am today without them. <clears throat> so, if anybody has questions about what we're up to, if I can help in any way or you know provide any sort of uh, I don't know advice or support on playing your game and taking these concepts and applying them to your life, you know you can you can contact me anytime. Uh, trying to think the best way to do that. I don't know. What do you think, Randy? Is it is it uh, best to <laughs> give yeah, yeah. my like my phone number or like how to find me? What's the best way to do that? What I'll do is this: inside of the, I'll upload this video to YouTube. I'll put um, some links inside of there, maybe to some of your socials, and they can reach out um, via that way, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks so much, Paul. I appreciate you, man. I'm gonna wrap up the call here. Um, and before I I take you off screen, um, just thanks for sharing your expertise, your insight, and just you know the overall impact you've created as a result, man. So we really appreciate you, Paul. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. All right. <clears throat>
all right folks so just to wrap up here that's just wasn't that awesome type a yes in the chat if you got some value out of that right let paul know in the chats um if you're watching this on replay uh feel free to drop a comment or a like or whatever platform you're watching this on uh drop a six word update you'll find a link in the description of this video for a six word update and uh here's the thing right this, paul is just one of many talented and amazing individuals who discovered the tga took the concepts and applied it to the real life right knowledge is not power applied knowledge is power and that's the beautiful thing about paul and people like him taking the concepts applying it to your life and creating value for them so uh yeah if you'd like to be one of the ones to uh share here uh, we'll put out some information in the tga for you to kind of uh, apply for a tga spotlight we'd love to have you we'd love to have you uh, so with that said folks thanks for being here we look forward to creating more impact with the tga remember live to learn give to earn right so thanks everybody for joining us have a great rest of your day we'll see y'all